Well hello, my name's Andy Tidy and welcome back to another edition of Canal Hunter. If you were listening carefully in our last episode, you'll have be expecting to see me standing at the top of the Ogly Locks and heading down towards Litchfield. Well, I'm not. I've changed my mind. You see, I kind of had a bit of unfinished business with the Hatherton Branch Canal. Uh, I'd followed the historic route down but I had this nagging desire to go and have a look at the restoration route and that's quite different. I kind of intimated there was a restoration plan. So the Hatherton Branch Canal is a bit on the back burner because it's one half of the Hatherton and Litchfield Canal Restoration Trust's activities. Anyhow, I've decided I'd like to go and have a look at the line that the Hatherton Branch Canal may take in the future. And this particular expedition was prompted by a contact from my friend Andrew Denny and he was wanting to walk the line so I thought why not go back to Hatherton. So 10 days after my last visit here I'm back in Carfeath and in this episode rather than following history we're going to follow the proposed restoration route all the way through from here to Churchbridge and then up to the Whirly at Lessington at Lord's Hayes branch. So I hope you enjoy this non-history version of Canal Hunter. So the bottom entrance to the Hatherton Branch Canal or the Churchbridge Branch. This is Hatherton Junction and I'm standing on bridge number one. If we just come across to the other side you'll see the still operating lock number one which leads up into a small basin containing moorings and a boatyard and then in the far distance you can see lock number two. Uh, that lock does still operate, sort of. Um, the bottom gates work um, but it's now a dry dock, it's had the edge taken out of it. Well we've moved up above the site of the second lock and what you can see behind me is the final remains as the line of the canal approaches the straight mile. It's next to the Dog and Partridge pub which is a better landmark. More profoundly the canal is approaching the M6 and that is currently the nemesis of this end of the canal. In order to get the canal through for navigation you're going to have to put a line underneath the road that I'm standing on. And the plan is to simply ignore lock 2, dig out the channel and then come through here at a lower level. That means you don't have to put a humpback bridge into the road which I don't think the highways agency would get too keen on. From then on it's just that small problem of the M6. So if you recall from my last episode the first and the major obstruction stands here at the M6 and the hope and the prayer is that one day just one day they'll widen the motorway and a culvert will be installed capable of taking boats. So this is Scrawper's End Bridge. It's another one of these bridges which has been lowered um, in time to flatten it out. It allows Oak Lane to cross over without too much of a hump. As you can see, the canal track is just fine. It just needs a little bit more height on the bridge. So this is a, a feeder coming out of the Hatherton Branch Canal and it goes down to the Gailey Reservoirs which in turn keep the staff in Mr Canal in water. I'm glad to say that the weather on this trip to the Hatherton Canal really does do it justice. The sun's out, birds are singing, it's 10 degrees, 
spring is on its way. So we've reached Said and Mill Bridge. This is one that's been much restored by the Waterways Recovery Group over the years, but this is a, a genuine barrel arched canal bridge, which you see pretty much anywhere around the canal system. But as you can see, the old iron strap posts are still here on the side, protecting the brickwork from the friction of all of those gritty ropes. So here we are, bridge number four, cross bridge, another bridge which has been reduced in height, another bridge which will need to be crossed. Now, this is probably where the video goes completely to pot because I've got to double myself up and pretty much crawl my way through. I would, I would suggest you went the other, you went over like me. I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay. Yeah, I'm coming round. A cross bridge seems to demonstrate one of the classic problems that CRT face. Uh, this big slab of concrete that's laid here uh, has been put in to try and make this safe because you see a car has come along here and knocked a working great slab of the parapet off onto the tape path. And there's normally ensues something of a protracted legal debate between the car's insurers and CRT to who's actually going to go about replacing it. Uh, looking at the bridge you can see there are cracks elsewhere so it's not the first time that this bridge has suffered. Well it looks like the number plate of the vehicle that uh, crashed through is sat on the far bank. It's AY14 FPE. And according to the miracles of modern technology, I can tell you that's a Mercedes in white. It's a diesel car. And a diesel. There you go. If on the other hand you have had your white Mercedes diesel AY14 FPE stolen and someone has chucked the plates over the side, I apologise for impugning the quality of your driving. So we're coming up now on Cats or Catches Bridge. This is one that's been levelled with uh, pipes drilled underneath it to bring the water through. Because it's only serving a farmyard, I guess restoring it with a new bridge wouldn't be too difficult.
So we've returned to Meadow Lock. This is the lock which has partially subsided but is in good condition and is ready for traffic again. The nice thing about Meadow Lock is the number of authentic bits and pieces of furniture about it. It's got the heel post straps, it's got uh, holes where the uh, paddles used to go and it's got the wooden seal still in place. So quite a lot of historical interest here for a canal that hasn't been used for 60 years. We've got as far as the back of the Roman Way Hotel and here a restored bridge stands over the remnant of the canal with a bit of the Seddon Brook flowing down its course. But up ahead in the trees you can see industrial units and this is the site of Walk Mill and here there is a, a complete obstruction to the restoration of this canal. So in order for the canal to proceed it's going to come off to the right and go out through the meadows in a big uh, U-shape, coming out maybe 400 yards around the industrial site and then back in to join the line of the canal out beyond the, uh, the site of the old mill. So having found a slightly higher bit of road to creep underneath, the line of the canal will come back in and rejoin Jovi's lock, which is lock number five. It'll then carry on on its old track for a hundred yards or so until another diversion is needed. Between the sites of locks five and lock six, uh, the new canal will veer off to the south once again and now it's going to be out on a trajectory following the line of the Seddon Brook all the way through to the M6 Toll. And that means that Lock 7 will be bypassed, as will the Walk Mill Lock, Lock 8. So the line of the canal will then follow the line of the Seddon Brook, which is significantly lower than the original line.
So this is the southern entrance to the N6 toll culvert. This was a culvert installed by the M6 toll at the point that the motorway was built about 15 years ago. As you can see, the culvert carries Serden Brook. So they had to build a culvert here, capable of carrying the worst of the storm rains. But they built it to the dimensions which were enough to satisfy the needs of a future canal restoration. So we're going to plod on upstream following the Serden Brook and see if we can follow the course of the proposed canal a little bit further. This is the site of the proposed Lock 6 tucked in tight alongside the M6 toll. This will then lift the canal up a bit and it will exit across slightly to the right as it swings just a little bit away from the motorway. We've hopped around to the eastern side of the railway uh, embankment, which is an obstacle that will need to be overcome. And then sandwiched in right alongside the M6 toll, uh, the line of the Seddon Brook runs. And in front of us, we've now got an access road onto the M6 toll and uh, a culvert built to full navigation standards. And from here on, the canal is heading up to the site of the next lock and then into the David Suchet Tunnel. Right, from here we're going to go and take a look for Churchbridge Lock, which is the site of lock number seven. That'll lift the canal up another four or five feet I suppose and then beyond it there should be the infamous David Suchet tunnel that runs the line of the canal and the Serden Brook uh, right the way through under one of the big roundabouts of the area. I seem to find myself here in the meadow so I don't really see any reason why I shouldn't carry on walking across and see if I can get a good look at the tunnel portal. With the David Suchet tunnel safely negotiated, the line of the canal will then follow that narrow strip of land that exists between the M6 toll and the A5. The canal will carry on easterly for another half a mile or so before climbing up through Lock 8 and then having to find its way under yet another road crossing, this time going back under the A5 and heading south. So the proposed route is 
that the line of the canal will follow a course broadly due south, heading for the last quarter mile of the Lord's Hayes branch. From here, the line of the canal enters an area of open farmland. The actual line is following a series of small brooks and drainage channels and it will rise up all the way through locks 9, 10 and 11 just south of the A5, then a fairly long flattish section before climbing through locks 12 to 17 as it approaches the end of the Lord's Hayes branch. So this walk along the route of the proposed route of the restored Hatherton Branch Canal reaches the Worley and Essendon just near Blockswich. You remember this entrance if you've watched all my other videos as this is the entrance to the Lord's Hayes Branch. This entrance was uh, blocked up in the 1950s when the arm was abandoned. It's one of the original Worley and Essendon constructed branches and the area behind was used uh, as landfill taking in all the old dredgings created by British Waterways. And that brings us to the end of this rather unexpected edition of Canal Hunter. We've followed back up the line of the Hatherton Branch Canal they do say that canals look different going the other way. Uh, we've followed the proposed line of the route um, underneath the M6 toll. We've come out around the Hatherton Reservoir and we've found our way up beside the A5 including the, the elusive David Suchet Tunnel. Well, the last couple of miles has been all the way across open ground so there's not a lot to be seen there at the moment. But finally, come the glorious day the Hatherton Canal will re-emerge at the junction behind me. So that is the end of this edition of Canal Hunter. Now I will return back to the Litchfield section or the Ogley Lock section and from here on we'll start tracing the line of the old canal all the way down to the branch on the Coventry Canal at Huddlesford. So hope you've enjoyed this episode. I'll see you soon. Happy hunting.